Morning everybody. It is Mixed Media Monday here at Open Studio with Christina Lovisa making a few adjustments to the camera. And I thought for today what I would do is maybe um, I'll be able to finish this painting. So we've uh, We've come back to this painting several times and what I mean by that is I think I started it maybe a month ago. Hey Nadine, I started it maybe a month ago and um, uh, and I haven't really gone back to it other than last week. Um, what we normally do on Mondays is um, what we started doing was a makeover Monday. And then what it evolved into was a Mixed Media Monday. So, hi Lona. So, Mixed Media Monday and Makeover Monday are going to be kind of combined today because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand back and, and come into this painting the way I would come back to any painting, whether it's mine or anybody else's. And when I'm judging whether or not my painting is done or, or where it is in the finish scale, I always start with the value and uh, uh, for contrast, basically, and I also look at, at composition. So um, I'm going to stand back so that I can illustrate this a little bit better. But the greatest area of high and low contrast is where our eye always tends to rest, right? So in my painting, you can see this great big area of black and then in contrast with this area of white. So it's balanced out up here with some more mid-tones but darker in range. So what happens is your eyes start here. Then, I'm not sure if you can see it in this um, in this video because I've got so many other things around this hanging on this wall, but there's actually a band of the original color that I blocked this out with on the bottom. So your eye starts here, it comes down here, and then with some streaky lines and things like that, we do come up here and we fall. So compositionally and value-wise, it's actually not terribly balanced right now. Um, like, I know that's a big ringing endorsement, right? When you say your art's not terrible. But this is, it's pretty good. Like, it's, it, the balance is pretty good. So now I can start working a little more on the fine detail stuff that I like to do. And um, pull it a bit more. But I'm going to avoid doing too much in black and white. So the reason I'm going to avoid that is I can add a few little details in black and white and things like that. But if I add like, let's say a whole lot of black up here, then I'm, I might be changing the balance of the contrast. So maybe a little more black up here, but, um, but not too much. And then maybe a little bit down here, but not too much. So do you see what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to drastically change the value at this point because it's already pretty balanced. So I'm going to work a little more um, um, in my mid-tones, I guess. So what I'm doing is I'm going through my um, drawer of, of uh, writing tools because I'd like to find, there we go, a white paint pen so that I can do some writing in here. So that might bring in a bit of interest into there. Now, knowing what to write um, is always very interesting because if you're, <laughs> people will always try to read it and always try to make sense of it, even if it's meant to be abstract. Um, and that's if your painting is meant to be for sale. So people want to relate to the words. Um, and at the same time, if you're going to do something famous, you have to give credit to the original author and that sort of thing and your text may be public or uh, copyrighted if you make prints of your work so just be careful about your text that sort of thing sometimes I just off the top of my head just start to randomly write lyrics but I try to make it obscure so that you really can't read the whole thing um, but then I find that if you are selling them people try to make sense of it and then if it doesn't make any sense to them or it's a word that they find offensive then they tend to um, not want to even <laughs> look past your <laughs> your uh, text so and and look at the whole painting so I generally will try to um, try to think of something that just comes to mind so I'm just going to write a bit of text across here now and I'll see if it stays or not I might obscure it a little bit because I'm not sure that I want it to be 
um, totally legible, but if there is a word that's going to stand out, I sh they should be more gentle words, I guess if that's a good way of putting it. So um, also, another little tip about writing is now that Linda just popped on, um, hi Linda, is um, people like text in other languages. So that's the other thing is write something in French or write something in Italian, just pull it out of the, um, if you don't know the spelling and all that, it can look kind of bad, right? If you, um, if you make a mistake. But if you are able to write in another language, people do find that really interesting. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm just gonna write something. I just have to think of what I wanna write, but it's definitely, um, it's for me, it's all about having that contrast, right? So I wanna break this area up. I don't want it to be um, necessarily completely legible, but um, it's more about the, the pattern, I suppose. Another thing you can do is if you have a nice line that you like, is just keep writing it over and over again. Another little tip. And the worse you're writing, the better it is. So my, there's my first loose text writing through there. So you can see it's more about pattern. Then I'll try and bring the camera in for a sec so you guys can see. So this little ouch device I have pinches my finger all the time. Um, let me pull that in a little bit closer so you guys can see it. You see? So I'm just pulling in a bit of... Um, a bit of writing just so it's more about like a fancy scribble I'm gonna turn that back around more about a fancy scribble than it is about the actual words there we go so now I want to balance some of this because I find this a bit too white so this was a bit too black and now I've gone ahead and dulled it down a little bit by putting in some white and now I think I'm going to look for um, my polka dot material. So I have a lot of tools I realized to make polka dots. And the reason I'm going to go with more polka dots is because this painting actually has a like two um, sibling paintings, right? And both of them have, I'll put them together later, um, but both of them have a similar feel and color, which is why I went ahead and changed um, directions on this one when I when I changed the color palette, because initially it was just a little too bright compared to the other ones. So I'm just looking for a sponge tool, and if I can find it, of course I can't find it right now. Hmm. All right, well, we'll use something else. So I'm going to use these cookie cutters that I have, right? And I'm just going to trace out some circles. So I'm just going to determine which size works best because I do have several sizes to work with. I think I'll use the larger one. So down here in the white, I think I'm going to bring in that charcoal, that gray color. And then up here, I'm going to bring in the same gray color in, sorry, I'm thinking out loud here, guys. So maybe that one I'm going to do a little smaller. No, I'll do the same size. Okay, so 
on this one I'm just going to trace my circles where I'd like them to be and I'm going to do the I'm going to do the uh, circles up here to be in contrast so I think I'll do them in the darker color yeah I'll do those in a darker and then on the bottom I'll actually do them as a solid polka dot you'll see in a sec so the reason I'm doing it this way is because I feel I have a lot of white space which could be filled with something a bit more um, interesting great word I think I'm going to fill it with something a little more interesting than um, just having the white space. White space is, is great. There we go. White space is great, however, I just feel that um, this could have a lot more, um, I don't know, fullness to it if I just, if I just play with the mid-tones. So, um, this one is going to be the opposite, right? So this one's going to be white with the gray circle. So I'm just going to now plug in where the circles are going to go. So all I'm doing, so if I found my big sponges, I would just be doing this a little simpler with my sponge, but it's okay. We'll just take it out together. There we go. So on this Mixed Media Monday, for anybody joining, we're kind of doing a bit of a Makeover Monday combined with a Mixed Media Monday. So I've really wanted to finish this painting for a long time now. And if I don't just do it, then I'm never going to get it done, right? So I just decided that over the next few days I'll be incorporating whatever our topic is. <coughs> into finishing this painting. So I actually go home and I think about this painting now, which must mean that it's really calling my attention. All right, getting there. And the first thing we did, or I did when I came to this painting, is I looked at it from a perspective of, um, from looking at the composition and looking at the values, and I decided that the darks and the lights were very well balanced. I really liked it. It kept you moving through the painting. But the one thing it was lacking was there was not a lot of mid-tones, right? We have, like, mid-tone here, and then dark and white. So now I'm going to play with the mid-tones a little bit. Um, I'm often cautioning you guys that you kind of live in the mid-tone world, meaning that we're always like, we're afraid of the dark, 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 and we're afraid of the light, light, light. And because maybe those two things seem too void for us. So so we tend to hover and, and then live in this mid-tone world. Or we're opposite and we live in this world of like super high contrast, right? It's like it's black or it's white or everything's shades of gray. So it's funny because we don't really move these things together in a very natural way. And maybe that says a lot about life and that says a lot about who we are. But I'm gonna keep encouraging you guys to bring those two worlds together more often because it is um, truly beautiful. Whoops, Daisy. It's truly beautiful when we can mesh these two things together. So I'm gonna plug my phone back in, see if I can't zoom in a little bit there. There we go. Move that down. Hi Sherry White. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull out some paint and a palette. 
and this part won't take too long, but once you see, once you see the balance of the mid-tones, you're going to be impressed actually because it really pulls things together um, when we have a nice, a nice balance. What I was saying we had here was we have dark and light and then mid-tone and then mid-tone. And it's just not enough mid-tone, right? So we're just going to pull these two things together in a happy way. I'm mixing a, a shade of charcoal that will excite me. And so my, my shade of charcoal is going to be Mars Black, which is a soft black in the first place. I'm throwing in a little bit of my Big Vat of Goo. I'll turn this down so you guys can actually see what I'm doing rather than me just talking. Um, so this is my Big Vat of Goo Brown. And I stirred in some of that. And I'm going to stir in some white. And we'll just see what kind of a gray I get. There we go. So I want it to be a warm charcoal color, which is why I added a little bit of that greeny brown color. And then once I'm satisfied with the um, with the mixture here, then I'll do a sample on the panel first and see what I think. So this white is stronger than I thought, so it's coming out quite gray light gray so no problem there we're just going to add some more mars black and so when you're mixing your charcoals or your grays or anything like that always look at what color of gray do you want do you want it to be warm do you want it to be cool what works with the rest of your painting so if you want it cool you might add a tinge of blue um, or green if you want to warm it up you can add a little bit of brown um, you got to be careful when you add a little bit of the mix-in colors because sometimes we can end up with and I do a little more of my brown you want to be careful when you mix in colors because you can drastically change your gray and then you'll end up mixing a lot more quantity than you actually wanted. So knowing this is going to dry a little darker as well, I think I might give this a try. Okay, so I'll put the camera back up. And here goes. So down here I wanted to actually paint the polka dot. So this is all about adding some mid-tone, right? It's not that the painting, I mean, I could just go ahead and, and do some stripes, or I could paint it solid, or I could add a, all kinds of, of mid-tone down here. But I'm thinking that I want the same mid-tone added, and I don't want to steal all the attention on the bottom of the painting, so I want to make and I would do that, right, because of the value. So because this is black and white, it will automatically steal all the attention. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that your eye doesn't just stay on the top or on the bottom. We need to move the eye through this painting. So polka dots have been kind of been one of my things for a while. But at points it has been stripes and bands, and um, but they're not they're not just gratuitous polka dots. You know what I mean? Like I'm using them in a pattern, and I'm using the pattern to direct the eye. And the reason I've chosen a mid tone, a darker mid tone is so that I can unify the top and the bottom. If 
funny thing about my cookie cutters is that they're not perfectly round. So I've got these kind of wonky shaped dots, which are kind of fun. And because I've made a nice opaque paint, I actually don't even need to go back in and alter this much. For those of you who are joining our paint workshops on Friday, um, this would be an excellent opportunity also to take some of those papers that you made and to just cut out some of the, um, the pieces, right, and to just work them in and collage them in. And working them in and collaging them in initially with, um, with the use of water instead of glue gives you a great opportunity to see whether or not that actually works within your your piece. So you don't always have to come up with something on the spot and work direct, right? We can work indirectly by cutting out some of those great papers. And for those of you who haven't uh, been joining our, our paid Friday classes. It's not too late. You can still go to my website, ChristinaLobiza.com and sign up for June, even though June is coming to an end. You still have access to all four of the workshops. watched over and over and over again. They're within the private Facebook group called June 2020 06 slash 2020. There we go. So some of them that are a little wonky, I may fix up later, or I may paint some white around them and clean them up. I'm not sure yet. I'll just have to see it from afar. What I want to do initially, like that one looks a little weird. What I want to do initially is just get some color down and then see what I'm thinking about the balance. So, so far the gray is really tying the top Um, elk picture in nicely to the bottom. And for those of you who have been paying attention to Open Studio, to my Open Studio workshops, you'll note that I don't often start with my image first, right? I always end with my image or incorporate it near the end. But I made a mistake on these canvases once upon a time. Um, and what I did was I started um, these canvases sort of like in a hurry and I glued because I was excited. I picked up all my images from Staples and I took all my canvases and I painted out uh, or I collaged the image in first on all of them. and. For those of you who know the way I paint, you'll know that that's not something I recommend. And that's only because when you start with your image first, you're always working around it, right? It's everything has to suit the image. So if you have an image in mind and it gets incorporated later, then you're not tied to anything. You haven't made a commitment to that image. So, and because it was only one of those photocopies, um, I've been constantly for weeks now working around this one image. So had I not done that to myself, I could have given myself a much simpler situation. Um, I could have given myself a much simpler situation by just leaving it alone and adding the image later because maybe this image wouldn't have fit in here. So 
So I kind of like this up here, but you know what? I'm willing to let it go. So let's just see what happens. So up at the top, I actually have collaged in a piece of fabric that has the, these gold stars in it. And I liked it from the beginning, but now I'm just gonna paint it gray because I feel like there's too much um, separation between the layers of this painting and between the stratospheres of this painting so I'm just going to try and pull it together um, in a little more cohesive way by getting rid of some of that top so you can already start to see that this is coming together a lot better because I'm balancing my um, my mid-tones and then my contrast tones. so my darks and the lights which were down here, we're stealing all the attention, right? But now that I've gone, I'm gonna see if I can zoom a little bit out. No, I don't know how to do that. But anyway, so what I did was I, I'm trying to balance out the contrast. I had too many lights and darks all happening in the same space. So I'm just adding more gray, more charcoal, which is like my mid-tone, which is the same as this. So by doing that, I'm, I'm doing a nice compositional balance. And in mixed media, that is one of the most important things, is that you don't just plunk down your image and then, you know, kind of make a cute background for it. We want it to be incorporated and we want it to be a flow. We want the painting at the end of the day to tell a story. Hi Diane. I want the painting at the end of the day to tell a story. I'm just gonna flip this around for a quick sec guys to see if I can zoom in and out. It's not letting me zoom in and out so I'm just gonna move that. Okay. I'll get a nice closer image for you guys afterwards. But in mixed media we really want to make sure that it's not just about an image with a, a pretty little background, right? Because there's, if someone, if you're selling your paintings, if someone doesn't identify with that image, then it's like this. It's like buying a book just because you like the title and the title is catchy and it, it gets you interested and you open it up and it's just blank pages. So it's not enough, right? So if you're doing mixed media paintings, just be careful that your paintings are paintings and that they they tell a story, they're complete. So if you're including imagery, your imagery should relate to the background. It should relate to the, the playfulness. It should relate to, it should tell a story without you having to utter a single word. And in, in my mixed media art, what I do is I use a lot of photographs that mean something to me and more recently I've been using my own photographs and so all these elk pictures and, and animal pictures I've taken them myself when I was in um, in Alberta mainly and in Wyoming and I have all these great animal pictures now and to me like each animal conveyed a certain message right so what I mean by that is like the 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 animals all had a different like like they, none of them were like standoffish and and that sort of thing because we weren't in any type of a a contrast situation so and then none of them were like also just that National Geographic picture of you know them perfectly posed with you know a little bit surrounding all that's not what we're trying to create here we're trying to create paintings where our imagery sits well within our hi Dominic <laughs> so my son is watching today <mwah> miss you Dom um, so yeah so that's what my paintings are all about I try to take the images and the photographs of of, um, of painting or sorry of pictures of animals or pictures of something that I've taken 
or things that I re can relate to and I integrate them into my art so that the art is actually a short story in itself rather than being like a, an isolated thing. So it's very uncommon for me to sell a painting to someone who says, oh, I love elk, I'm just going to buy that. It's not generally about that. It's, it's more about the, the person finding a relationship to the story within my art or getting the general sense of it, right? Getting the mood of it and, and purchasing it for that reason. There we go. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna incorporate the yellow a little bit up there because I kind of liked it. I'm not sure why it's up there, but it works, doesn't it? Maybe I'll just change the shape of it so we have this weird little crescent moon thing. And I don't even know, maybe a lot of this will change. I have to stand back and take a look. But as I stood back and looked at it earlier, it seemed to me like I was, I was negating all the mid-tone, right? I had so much, um, there we go. So much contrast happening, the dark and the light and I didn't have a lot of mid-tone space. So now you can see these shapes are really weird and they've got to go. Um, <laughs> thanks, Diane. So, yeah, so I think these shapes, which were gray, now they have to change um, because you can see that they're, they, it's a good place for a pop color, right? Um, I still have a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of playing to do, but essentially this is much better balance. And the way I'm going to uh, do my my checks and balances the way uh, we talk about all the time is, no blue, um, is by making sure that our, where is it? Um, so we, we make sure that the contrast is good, right? And then we make sure our darks and lights are good. We need to bring in some, some dark up here because you can see that this is a little too mid-tone right now, right? We need to bring the two together and, but I definitely need to change the color of those shapes, or maybe they actually should be collage. They could be collage, just, I have to think about what I want to put there. Um, oh, sorry, what I was talking about was uh, being able to assess your painting. So standing back and looking at it is one thing, um, but another thing is to take a cropped photo of it. So I often will just take a nice cropped photo of my um, painting and I'll just like remove myself from that painting and then I'll come back and I'll check on it in contrast to the, to the photograph. So I'll look at the photograph, I'll say, oh, would I buy that painting or do I find that painting interesting just by looking at the photograph. And then when you come back to the picture, I find that that's when you get a really good sense of whether or not that picture was um, was really speaking to you or not, like on the thing. Be uh, it's hard to describe, I guess. I, I really don't even have the words for that. But as soon as you take a photograph and then you actually look at your painting, let me see if I can think of a better way to say this, then you actually look at your painting, I find it interesting that the painting itself seems to change and wow that's a great color um, the painting itself seems to change and it's only because we can appreciate it first on a photograph and so by taking your little iPhone picture you get a good appreciation of what your actual painting looks like and the values and the contrast and all that stuff but then when you come back to it and you see the scale of it and the depth and the texture it now all of a sudden it's even it's it's magnified it's amplified it's even more so what i find is that when i come back to my paintings if if what i looked at on my photograph seemed like unbalanced when i come back to it it's like now i see it all of a sudden it's magnified it's amplified because I saw it in print and then I see it for real. But if I don't see it in print, sometimes I don't actually see the, um, the, the issues that the painting may have. So this color 
is very cool. So this is a really weird mixture of quinacridone violet and um, cadmium light orange. And it's made this really interesting pinky, purpley color, which is really pretty. And in contrast to everything else, it's a bit of a pop. So I like it. I actually don't think I'm going to put that anywhere else because, um, other than over here, because it's got a really nice, unique tone to it. There. So the thing I'm going to have to do now is, like I said, take my picture take a photo of this painting cropped out. I don't want to see anything else in the picture. And then I'll have to really look at it and see how I feel about the, um, the balance and the scale and the contrast and everything else. What I've actually done is I've added a ton. Oh, thank you. What I've actually done is I've added a ton of movement to this painting. So do you see that now? So before this guy was just kind of like in his, his, um, raindrop which I found really interesting that this shape looked like a raindrop and all this this sentiment and the words and the elk and everything is contained in this this droplet of water which down here is like falling into the hole so I know that sounds a little bit hokey smoky but when I did it I thought it was really interesting because this whole bottom had this whole world of color and stuff happening. And then I, I color blocked it by painting over some white. I'm gonna take the camera off the uh, thing so we can, we can talk about this a little bit better. Okay, let me flip that around. Okay, so down here, right? all this color that was going on in the bottom, that was the whole painting. So all this stuff on the bottom, all this color, all this pattern, that was the whole painting up to here. And then I color blocked it by putting some white on it. And then that was really great because it, it um, really gave it a, a, like a, I don't know, a, the bottom was like a frame and then the colors related to the top. So I love that. And then in the color blocking, I added the, um, the white on the bottom and the gray on the top. And what it's done is it's given this painting a crazy amount of movement now. Like, this painting is seriously fun. I'm not actually sure how much I want to tone it down. Normally, the, my instincts would be to tone it down because it seems a bit too much, but there's something about it there's something about it that's leading me to leave it so I think what I might do is let it dry and then I might put a white glaze over the bottom so that these gray dots are a bit more white or I could also let them dry and then just sand them back a little bit and then that would distress them into the background so that may be one way of calming those down it's still going to be nice and playful, but I'm not 100% sure that I won't do much more other than, you know, finish up my edges and integrate and seat this a little bit better and then, you know, put the antlers back in and then make the top of this, which you guys can't really see anymore, but I've lost a lot of my teardrop um, shape, which I'll put back in. But overall, I think I'm really happy with with the way this painting is going. It's one of those ones where I'm just going to have to live with it for a little bit because I actually like it. So, and like I said, I find this for me, it's just a little busy and I may have to calm it down. Hmm. Sorry, now I have to think and I'm thinking out loud. But I think if I grab my my pencils like in here, for instance, I can add some sketch marks. So sketch marks help um, 
incorporate your images but also make it look like a like an architectural drawing of some sort I'm kind of making that up but it's it's just one of those things I do sometimes I add some some sketch lines um, yeah I'll put the antlers back in I think I don't think there's too much more I'm gonna do to this guys so if I do anything more to this I will follow up with you tomorrow on that in our Tuesday um, open studio so do join me an open studio tomorrow again at noon where we'll tackle some more mixed media painting issues and yeah just loving going with the flow okay so anyway so let's do this tomorrow guys and the other thing I think I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm gonna put these three paintings together because remember I told you this has like a sister painting right or two sister point paintings I'm gonna put them together and then that way we can um, see if this one is a little over the top compared to the others something making me feel like it might be all right but um, yeah so join me tomorrow sorry for the short um, open studio today but I really feel like I want to leave this one alone to let it dry a little bit do a little sanding and I don't think it needs too too much more um, thanks guys for watching and I shall see you all tomorrow